Hello out there in cyber world. Uh, as promised, uh, I posted the other day a before and after of a Photoshop smile design on a young prosthodontist I actually haven't seen yet. I'm going to see her for the first time tomorrow. And so I wanted to show you uh, one of the Photoshop uh, techniques that I use uh, to digitally alter teeth. And I'm just going to show you on one tooth uh, to make this fairly quick what I did. And I have the image opened up here in Camera Raw, uh, this image right here. And let me center that for you here. And we can do a lot in Camera Raw. There's some similar functions in Lightroom. And so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take a look at the exposure of this image. And this image is clearly overexposed. I didn't do this before. Uh, let's look up here in the uh, histogram up in here. And I want you to look at this LAB value here, L standing for lightness. And most of you will not have your histogram or your functions um, uh, gamut, color gamut sent to this. It'll be set to RGB. To set it to show LAB, you click on the histogram, put the mouse up there, and control click, and you would click show LAB, and it'll show the LAB uh, values. So for with unless we actually color correct this, which we didn't, because I haven't seen her yet and I didn't take this image, I probably want to adjust this down to to maybe a little bit better exposure. Anyway, um, what we can do is uh, is I'm just sort of measuring the color right here, and I happen to know that for measurements that uh, that a zero value or a zero value or zero and one is around L79, pretty close to that. So let's adjust that down just a little bit here, and I'd already done that before. Um, so 79, so that's, that's a little bit better exposure. Now we can look at the, uh, the highlight warnings. There's a little button up here in the upper right, it's called highlight clipping warnings. You can turn that on, and that can tell you where there's actually no detail in the image. There's little red spots, you can't create detail there. Um, so we'll turn that off so it doesn't look so weird. And I took the exposure down, so it looks probably a little bit more like maybe what the exposure should have looked like. Anyway, so let's open this up in Photoshop. That was the real point to this. Click down here, Open Image. And it's open now in Photoshop. And I will go ahead and fill the screen. And to fill the screen with the image, Command or Control-0. Then I say Control-or, the word after or would be a PC command. First thing I'll normally do with an image, let's look here in the Layers palette to the right. Uh, with the only layer highlighted, the background layer, I'm going to then duplicate that so I have a layer that hasn't been adjusted or if something hasn't been adjusted, I could go back to the original. To duplicate that, I do Command or Control, so Command J, that duplicates the layer. And then we're going to work on this layer with a very simple technique. Uh, using the liquify tool and there's many different tools we can use in Photoshop to make some digital adjustments. What I'll do here is, or what I would have done, excuse me, I would have made some measurements first with analog and then created some digital conversions uh, to make a decision as to what I would have maybe moved gingiva or moved the incised ledge. And again, this has nothing to do with how we treat somebody. This is just a, a sort of a digital uh, try in or a digital test drive, so to speak, uh, of, of what we might want to or where we might want to go. And really to get the patient excited or motivated about what we, we might want to do or possibilities for an improvement in their looks. So I'm going to go up in here into this filter here up at the top of the screen right here and click on this drop down menu in the filter menu and click on liquify here and bring this menu up here. And uh, uh, whatever our layers highlighted, in this case, we lay, it was layer, excuse me, layer one, and we could have renamed that. And to zoom in on this, we could click on this little thing here that looks like a magnifying glass, or we can bring our mouse on top of this and use the Z uh, t um, uh, key and this click, click, click to grow this up. Now, what we're going to want to do is, is start moving some things around, and there's a few tools we can move some things around with digitally, but my favorite is the forward warp tool, and the hot key is W, meaning the sh uh, keyboard shortcut you can just click on, and click on this, uh, excuse me, or the W uh, on the keyboard, and that highlights it. You can see this little circle come up, 
and that's the brush size. To grow the brush, everybody take a quick look at their keyboard, look at the P key, just to the right of the P key are a couple of brackets. The right bracket grows the brush, the left bracket shrinks the brush. Now when you're digitally moving something, what you don't want to do is go in circles like that, or obliquely, it'll do weird things, as you can see. To undo what you just did, a mistake, Command or Control Z, so Command Z in this case, to go backwards, and you see you don't want to go sideways like that, it does weird things, Command Z to undo. Your movement should either be vertical or horizontal. In this case, I want to maybe move the contact over if I've reprepped the teeth a little bit. So I want to maybe narrow just a little bit there. And I want to have decided maybe we want to move the gingiva up there just a little bit here. And we want to do a little crown linking or something like this. Uh, I first figured out how to do this in about 2002 and taught it to my students starting in about 2004. You can ask them. And then I uh, actually taught the first lecture on this in 2007 to the Florida Dental Association. And I stopped after that because, well, anyway, I got criticized a lot that I was uh, potentially doing something to images, and, and I really don't. So, uh, anyway, um, Johan talked to me and started to do this. Dr. J. So uh, the technique is really so you can help educate your patients and do a better job and hopefully motivate your patients to a nice treatment and what's possible. All right, so you can see the improvement of the shape of the tooth here. Now, when we get down into this region here and start wanting to maybe reshape an edge or something like this, take a look. You can see what happens is with whatever's in the circle distorts. So what I'd like to do is maybe move this corner without changing this edge. Let me undo what I just did, Command or Control Z. Now I can do that by creating what's called a mask. Now how you do that, you go up right in here. I can do this within this tool here. I can do it outside of this tool, but I can do it real easily while I'm in this tool. And it's called the Freeze Mask tool. Right here, I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to activate a essentially digital tape. I can paint something here inside here that's not permanent and I'm telling Photoshop I don't want anything to happen on that red paint there, digital paint. I'm going to paint right here and what I can do then is I'm just masking that and I'm blocking that out and then come back and turn on my wand tool or warp tool, excuse me, and right up here. So if you forget where it is, it's right up here, forward warp tool. And what I can do is I can come in here and create a little bit more customization to this edge here. And, ah, sorry, I hid something. Ah, my bad, my bad, okay? So when you hide something with mask options, unfortunately, you got to back out of this. And what I'm going to do is just click OK, and my options are pretty good right there. And the best thing to do is for you to see, because it's actually a little difficult to undo that. So I just applied the options, click OK. And then you come back in the filter, liquify filter, and then just continue. Okay, so I'm going to zoom back in. It's good to see what happens sometimes if you make a little bit of mistake. So I just applied that, and I just come back in and just start adding to it. Okay, so I'm just going to add to what I'd already done rather than figure it out. Because every once in a while, you'll do something like that. And basically, it'll just freeze on you. All right, then I'll just come back. Oops, oops. I'm not painting now. There we go. And I turn back off, turn back on the forward warp tool. And I didn't really want to spend a lot of time doing this. It takes a lot of time. It takes more time for me to tell you how to do it than me to just sit and do it. It would take me normally about 20 minutes to do somebody's teeth. And you can play around with the incisal edge and create little incisal effects if you want. Make everything a little bit unique. I would typically do one tooth at a time like this. Uh, there's other techniques I can copy and duplicate tooth. I can extract this tooth. Once I've designed this tooth, I can just select the shape of this tooth, and I can copy and paste it on the adjacent tooth. Uh, you can get and save time. Then I can do other tooth individually. All right. When you get good at this, I would recommend you sit in front of the patient and do it individually. 
All right, so that's basically how you do a tooth like that. And this is the preferred technique if I'm if I have reasonably nice teeth, but they're just short, and I play can play around with, with their teeth. Now the nice thing is I can save this tooth in a different file if I want to, and use it in somebody else's face. Now when you're sitting and talking with the patient, one last thing, and then I'll finish. Uh, let me zoom in here. The Z key, just click on that. Zoom in so you can see it. Z, and then just click on it. And then we're going to shrink that down. Or excuse me, go up right in here, not shrink. Click on this opacity slider. Slide it to the left just a little bit so we can look here. And then I'm looking through the top layer, which is before this. That's before, after. I'm making that transparent. And I can look through there now and be talking with the patient. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Patient, uh, what we need to do is a little bit of a gum lift here. We need to move your incisal edge down there. We need to move the gum up or something like that. We're not sure if that's going to be an orthodontic situation or, or a periodontal situation. We don't know that yet. We just know that that's where we'd like the gum to end up. And then we can measure uh, analog. We can measure the length of this tooth, and we can create a digital conversion. We can do all kinds of fun things here. But uh, we can talk more... Um, patient can visualize then what we're trying to do. Anyway, so you got the idea, so have, have fun with this, uh, this technique, and hopefully uh, this was useful for you. Take care out there.